Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice rational equation. We have x to the 6th power plus 2 x to the 5th divided by 2x squared plus 9 and it's equal to 9. Nice, two nines. And then we're going to be solving for x values. This is a rational equation, but guess what? We're going to turn it into a polynomial equation. First of all, notice that if we're looking for real values, which we probably should for this channel, because I have another channel called A plus BI for complex problems. If you're interested in complex numbers or you want to learn more about them, go ahead and check it out. But in this channel, we usually deal with real numbers and real solutions. Sometimes we look at complex solutions just for the fun of it, but that's not our uh, main goal. So to be able to solve a problem like this, first of all, notice that the denominator cannot be zero for real values of x because 2x squared plus 9 cannot even be 0, let alone be negative, right? So what do we do then? We can safely multiply both sides by that and eliminate the fraction because who likes fractions? Nobody, right? If you like fractions, let us know in the comment section. And if somebody likes fractions, don't blame them because uh, they must be very brave, right? Great. So now... We're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by that. So that's cross multiplication, in other words. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute. By the way, I think this is a really cool problem because I can't remember where I saw this. I think it was in a book and I have a feeling that the book was in Russian, but I can't remember exactly, so I can't really tell you. But I don't think I came up with this problem. So that's probably somewhere. But it's a beautiful problem. I love it. And you'll see in a little bit why. First of all, notice that this is a very hectic I mean, a hexic equation, now it's six degree, right? So there's no formula. There's no hexic formula, very unfortunate. There's not even a quintic formula. Okay, and don't get me started on this. There is no quintic formula. Don't say non-expressible by blah, blah, blah. There is no quintic formula that gives us the solutions. If there is, let us know, give us a link and we'll check it out. So, so this is pretty interesting because we're gonna be solving a very high degree, but guess what? A lot of terms are missing. That's what makes it even more fun. Look at this. We have the sixth power, the fifth, the second. Uh-oh, we're skimming like fourth and third in the x term, but we have a constant. Of course, we do need constants, right? Who doesn't like constants? Yay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a hocus-pocus method that I also learned from Nadia Fan uh, for solving quartic equations. It's a really beautiful, nice method, and it's applicable in this case. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's do a little bit of hocus pocus or math and magic, shall we? So first step is to add something to both sides so that we can make the left hand side a perfect square. Can you guess what it is? Okay, let me tell you. We have x to the sixth plus two x to the fifth. If you add x to the fourth, you get a perfect square. And do you wanna know why? First of all, let me write the right hand side as well because I'm gonna add it to both sides and obviously they are equal. So maybe, okay, I can add it at the end, that's fine. So now we're gonna be adding x to the fourth to both sides. Why? Because when you add x to the fourth to both sides, this expression becomes a perfect square. Do you know why? Because it becomes x to the third plus x squared quantity squared. If you didn't see that, go ahead and factor out x to the fourth you're gonna get x squared plus two x plus one, which is x plus one quantity squared, and then you can quantity whatever square it later. Make sense? But not only that, what makes this problem really awesome is when you add that term, it also makes the right-hand side a perfect square. How perfect is that, right? How is that possible though? Well, it's quite possible, look at this. Isn't this x squared plus nine squared? That's why if you're dealing with algebra, you should be able to recognize these perfect squared really quickly. In other words, you need to have an eye for these things. But how do you develop that skill? By solving a lot of problems, by looking at other people's solutions, by practicing like crazy. Some people ask like, you know, why are you good at certain things? Because I've been practicing. I'm not a genius. Uh, I'm probably average, who knows? But I keep practicing and I've been doing it for a while. So anyways, what do we have? Two squares that are equal to each other. How good or how nice it can get, right? So here's, here's a couple options. If a squared equals b squared, you can square root both sides and consider the absolute value. This gives you a equals b or a equals negative b, right? Now, you can also subtract this 
right hand side expression for both sides and turn into a perfect square. I mean, difference of two squares like dots, but that's unnecessary and that's too much work. For lazy people, this is the way to go. So now we have the following. Option one, x cubed plus x squared equals x squared plus nine. And you know what? This gets even better. x squared cancels out. Uh-oh. We got x cubed equals nine. Are you sure about that? Yes, that's the case, right? I hope I didn't make any mistakes, by the way. I'm kind of thinking about it like, are we sure we get the right idea? Yes, I think so. So from here, we get x cubed equals nine, which gives us x equals the cube root of nine. Now, if you're looking for complex solutions as well, what you can do is take this expression, multiply both sides by, or just the right hand side, I guess, e to the power two pi n i, which is the complex representation of one. In other words, this is complexification of one. Then cube root both sides and consider all possible values of n, n is an integer, so on and so forth, right? Cool. So that is one way to find complex solutions. But we got the real solution. We don't really care about the rest, right? That's good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other scenario. Hmm. The other scenario is going to give us the following. x cubed plus x squared equals the opposite of x squared plus 9, which is negative x squared minus 9. Hmm. Is this going to give us a good solution? I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and check it out because I haven't checked it out before. x cubed plus 2x squared equals negative 9. So we can kind of think of a number. First of all, notice that x cannot be positive. Why? Because the left-hand side is positive if x is positive, but the right-hand side is negative regardless of x. So x needs to be less than 0. First observation. Second, we can test some numbers. How about negative 1? It's not going to work. How about negative 2? Maybe it'll work. Who knows? If x is negative 2, we're going to get negative 8. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Uh-oh, we got a 0. Too bad. So how do we solve it then? Uh, we could probably use the cubic formula. But that's going to be, it's not going to be too complicated. No, not really, maybe. You know what? We could probably do something like this. We could try to factor it. If it's factorable, though, we can kind of assume that, okay, there's no x term. So maybe we can kind of write it like ax plus b and cx plus d. Okay. Oops. No, not really. One of them needs to be a linear. Sorry about that. So maybe x plus a and then x squared plus bx plus c. There you go. And then if you distribute the right-hand side, you're going to get x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus ax squared plus abx plus ac. And then by rearranging the terms a little bit, like b plus a is the coefficient of x squared, and c plus ab is the coefficient of x, and then ac is the constant term. Now you can kind of compare this to this one so that the coefficient of x squared will be 2, the coefficient of x would be 0 because there is no x in the original polynomial and ac should be 9. Now, if you're looking for if there are any integer solutions, ac should be 9. That indicates if ac are integers, then 1, 9, negative 1, negative 9, 3, 3. But uh, you kind of need to test it out. For example, and also, of course, c plus ab equals 0 gives us another option, which means c is equal to negative ab. And we know that a plus b is equal to 2. So from here, I could possibly replace hmm, b with maybe 2 minus a, and then replace b with 2 minus a, and then kind of distribute. And c is going to be from here, a squared minus 2a. Are there going to be any integers that satisfy this? Oh, I also know that ac is negative 9. I mean, ac is 9. Sorry about that. ac is 9. So I can go ahead and replace c with a squared minus 2a, set it equal to 9. And guess what? This gives us a cubed minus 2a squared equals 9, which is an equation that is very, very similar to the original. So we didn't really gain anything by doing this, but at least I tried. Another option could be just try to solve the system. Do not make any assumptions. Well, we can't solve it. It's get, uh, we, we're stuck. But one thing we can do is probably try to use the cubic formula, but that would take forever. So let's stick with the first solution set, which is cube root of 9. Let's settle for that, okay? Uh, did I have a solution or graph for this? I probably forgot. Sorry about that. 
try to remember next time. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.